yang tidak ini. Um, welcome back to APC webinar series 2021. I'm Shan Lee, APC Sports Manager. I uh, wish you a wonderful new year and hope you had a uh, great holiday. Also, thank you very much for your interest and participation for the um, last year. Um, we will continue the webinars in this year, so you won't want to miss out them. Please keep um, an eye on keep an eyes on our web page for the um, next uh, webinar, please. Um, today I'm very glad to introduce to you Mr. Sam Turner, as you know, is the um, CEO and Secretary General of IFCTMF. Who gave us a uh, lecture regarding the introduction to CP4 last uh, session? But today he is uh, with us as a co founder of um, Para Football. Um, you may wonder what um, Para Football is. Um, it is the um, new foundation launched on 3rd uh, December last year, and Sam will explain the detail uh, shortly. Um, we do also have um, Freddie and Charlie from Para Football uh, to support the same. Um, if you are with us now, please say hello to everyone, uh, Charlie and Freddie. Hello, nice to meet you, everyone. Uh, my name is Freddie. Uh, I'm the business development officer at Para Football. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be here with you, and thank you all for your time and thank you for being here. And I hope this session will be, will be as insightful and enjoyable as you'd expect. Thank you. And perhaps Charlie is doing something behind the scenes, so. Yeah, I think Charlie will be joining us shortly. She may be having some internet issues. Yeah. Okay, no problem. Okay, so before this uh, session begins, please uh, make sure your microphone is on mute during the um, session. And there will be a QA time at the end of the session. However, um, everyone is welcome to ask your questions in the chat window um, anytime. So, without further ado, uh, I give you Sam. Sam, the floor is yours. Thank you. Yeah, just share my screen for everybody. So, so good morning, afternoon, evening, whatever the time is for, for you. Thank you all for, for joining today to, to find out more about this. We're, we're very excited to, to share this new um, organization, um, a new direction um, around para football. Um, and we want to explain a bit more to you what it's about, because I'm sure there are many questions that hopefully we can either answer today or we can continue those conversations later after today about how we can work together and how we can support each other. So you may have seen some of the social media and the websites already, um, but if not, you see our logo here, which you'll be able to recognize on, on the social media. Um, so there's myself, I work day to day in IFCPF, developing cerebral palsy football, um, in the International Federation, but then para football is a, a new organization which I'll explain a bit more about that myself and a couple of others have um, got, got this started and starting to bring together the different stakeholders of, of para football. Let Freddie introduce himself. So as I said earlier, my name is Freddie. Uh, I have intensive experience in the football industry. Uh, I previously, previously got the privilege to work with Aurora and AFC under the Eagle program, uh, and I got the chance to meet Sam there, and now I'm supporting him in, uh, in business development of Para Football. Thank you, Freddie. And then should have 
Charlie joining us um, hopefully at some point, but Charlie just got involved with the organization, helping us um, as a journalist to tell the, the powerful stories of our athletes, um, helping to inspire more people and, and get them involved in uh, what we do so that we can make sure that everybody around the world knows about all the amazing opportunities for them to be part of football um, and to be involved. Okay, so I've got a, a little video. Um, this is very personal for me because I, I went to Bangladesh um, at the end of 2018 um, and we delivered a, a workshop for CP football, but we also supported um, para football um, and I remained in contact and at the start of December, they launched the, the Bangladesh Para Football Association, um, creating lots of different opportunities. So this is quite a nice little video from that organization. Hopefully the technology works. <laughs> Okay, so the, the link is here in the in the presentation and we can share that or you can look on Facebook. Um, there may have been a little bit of a lag on the, the internet. I don't know if that affects the quality, but then you can see it later. But this first event that they they did on the on the third of December, International Day of Persons with Disabilities, um, brought together players from amputee football, CP, um, deaf intellectual disabilities so there was a range of different players there involved in that day um, a, a fantastic event okay so just to help with to make it clear for everyone because i know that the words para paralympic para sport can be used interchangeably so when we're talking about para football, um, we do have the types of football that have been linked to the Paralympic Games and those that are recognized international federations as well. So we've got CP football, um, blind football, um, power chair, who were all recognized international federations. But the idea with this organization is that the, the para, we take the word para from the Paralympic to mean something that runs alongside not Paralympic, but actually wider than that. So all types of football um, that run alongside one another to provide opportunities for persons with disabilities. So that's where we're, we're looking wider than just the, the Paralympic sports, but looking at all those different types of football. Um, and then when we talk about football or for some of those from more American or Australian countries, um, soccer, but we, we use the two words interchangeably um, and we also have some other formats or particularly one format involved where there are different ways of kicking or hitting the ball as a format of football as well. So we use those words very openly and generally so that we make sure that we're inclusive um, and we create as many different opportunities to make sure that every person with a disability has a way to be involved in the sport of football. Okay, this information is on our website, so you can read. I know that the text may be small for you, but just to have a look in your own time. But when we talk about inclusion, um, we're not just talking about a person has a specific impairment and therefore they 
play a specific type of football, but actually we want to empower people with a disability to choose how they want to be involved in the game. Um, I'll share some more examples in, in a little bit, but um, looking here, where a, a player is able to and wants to, we want to support regular football to include people with a disability into those mainstream regular football opportunities so they can play alongside their peers within the local community or to the highest possible level. Then also look at maybe other types of football such as walk-in football, five-a-side, small-sided games, um, various different formats that allow modified rules to include people with a disability. Then also there is pan-disability football where it is a, a disability environment but it provides an opportunity for multiple impairment groups to be part of that group um, and attend and play with one another. So again, it's a, a place where people with a disability can be together, maybe understand one another's specific needs, um, but has that mix of impairments. And then finally, there's the impairment specific activity, which you'll be aware of, such as amputee football, blind football, um, power chair, CP, um, there's a whole range. And again, they're, they're all fully listed on our website about the all the different types that at this time we're aware of but part of our work is to find out if there are others that we need to work with and bring on board or if there are gaps out there where there needs to be another type of football created so that we can fill that gap to make sure everybody can play okay so we set up para football as a foundation um, this is very important because the idea is that we, it's not a, a membership organisation, but it's a foundation to, to do this piece of work. Um, and then maybe in the future that this piece of work may be covered by um, FIFA or other football organisations. So therefore, we're not looking to, to do it in place of, but actually just pick up and support the development of power of football, maybe until such time as FIFA or such organisations have the capacity, capability to be able to lead on that. But the, <clears throat> the main aims of the organisation is that we're working in partnership with the international federation, so not taking away their governance of the game or anything like that, but actually bringing them together to collaborate and work with one another. We're also working to support national football federations and associations to either work with the existing bodies who are delivering para football activity or to start that activity in their country, but making sure that football organizations are involved. Sorry, I got muted there. Um, so yeah, making sure that the football organizations are then leading on that football and being involved. And finally, we want to showcase all the opportunities available to persons with disabilities. So the impairment specific opportunities that we've mentioned, but then also all the other ways that they can engage with a game of football. And we've got various examples of that as well. So just here is um, some of the international federations that are already involved in our partner international federations group. Um, bringing them on board to, to collaborate and work together. Um, but as I say, there are further organisations that are working to engage as well. But this is very much a, a partnership approach where we look at areas of mutual interest where we can support one another, where we can really take the game forward um, and making sure that they're not working in competition, but working to support one another and make sure all those opportunities exist. On our communications, um, you see from these from these pictures below, I talked about different ways of playing football. So on the left is a, a player who is a who was born without a right hand. Um, so currently there there isn't an adapted format of football for him to play um, as an outfield player, but he has played at the highest level of the La Liga Spanish football um, as a professional football player and also played professional football in Australia. So Alex is a, 
is one of our player ambassadors and a fantastic example of how a person with a disability can make it to the highest level of football and be that role model for others who want to go on the on the same journey. Um, and also the the lady you can see the the third picture along is a female deaf player who plays in the highest uh, level of female football in Spain, um, and that's the in regular football. So another example of a person with a disability playing within uh, the, the regular mainstream game. But then we also have examples of people with a disability playing within specific formats as well. But on our communications, we aim to communicate and showcase all the opportunities available around para football, but then also to support organisations to talk and share their message in the right way, using the, the best possible language, the best messaging, um, imagery, so that we show these players as football players who happen to have a disability, that we highlight them as people who are achieving and performing in their sport, but there is a disability there as well. So rather than being disability focused, about being football focused, um, to highlight them in the best possible way. Freddie? Yeah. <laughs> So coming to para football units, uh, Sam mentioned the importance of communication and how it's going to play a major role in spreading awareness and sharing our stories. Well, good governance and capacity building will help support our partners for the organization to be well-led, sustainable and inclusive of persons with disabilities, develop organizational capacity with the aim of strengthening partners with a right, with wide range of support, whether through sharing resources, expertise and being one big united collective voice. We, can, we can't talk about para football without talking about football development. And through football development, we aim to bring together key stakeholders and partner organizations to create and develop sustainable participation opportunities and pathways for players to interact with the game they love, the way they choose, through mentoring support, best practices, education, and awareness. And just to add to that, something we're doing is, um... You know, we, we're identifying good people from all world regions to make sure that we have the right people who understand maybe the language, the culture, the, the history, the organisation of sport within each region so that they can be that, that real support. That um, it's not, you know, me sat in England or someone sat in um, other countries, but actually we're identifying um, really good people who to know the region and can provide maybe more tailored support and work together to share those best practice examples. Thank you, Sam. Uh, and when it comes to business development, um, we believe that we are stronger together and our collaboration as para football will help us to build strong and strategic partnerships with key stakeholders in the football field and attract support and investment through funds, grants, sponsorships to the para football family. And then on classification, we know that this is a, a big area for, for everyone. Um, so aiming to, to work together, be that in classification research um, or to support all the organisations to be compliant with the, the IPC classification code or maybe where it doesn't fit, um, we, we support them to, to instill a classification system of rules um, along the, the same sort of lines so that we're getting everybody to work in a, a compliant and a professional way to make sure that their rules and their systems are clear about the eligibility, who can be involved. And then when players aren't eligible to be involved, how do we make sure that we take that responsibility to provide an alternative opportunity for them as well? And as I know many people on this call will be fully aware that when players or athletes are deemed ineligible within the within classification um, it can then be a huge gap but this is why as an organization as para football that's our opportunity to support those players to make sure that they always have a way to play the game okay so further units um, within para football um, we're bringing together all the international federations so that we can do research um, on the medical side 
but also things like injury surveillance. If we can measure the injuries and track them across all types of football, then we can develop a medical consensus and instill policies and guidance and best practice that protects our athletes and supports them. Um, examples of this already, you may have seen some of the um, concussion protocols, policies that IFCPF, CP Football launched and, that, and is being taken on by IPSA within blind football as well. Well, when we work together, these policies protect our players and support para football organisations and also para sports as a whole movement. We're also similar to classification on clean sports. We know that there are some international federations who already have best practice and strong anti-doping programs, but then where this doesn't exist, um, para football will be bringing the international federations together to ensure that they instill and develop strong and robust anti-doping programs, that they're all compliant with the WADA anti-doping code. Um, and we do that as a collective so that we support one another. Um, again, there is no point in us all working on our own anti-doping programs, duplicating each other's work, when maybe a core amount of that work can be done centrally together um, and allow people who have got involved, like many of you as volunteers in sport, to be on the grass, on the court, doing the, the area that we love and not, um, not as much sat behind the computer doing the paperwork as I think I spent most of my life doing now. So uh, hopefully get people more focused on the, on the sports side of things. Okay, Freddie, do you want to share? So, uh, thank you, Sam. Uh, through para football, we recognize that uh, there's a wide range of key stakeholders involved in leading and developing inclusive football opportunities. Uh, and we believe through the network we have, whether through Aurora, through AFC, or other organizations helping us and supporting us in this, uh, we believe we have the right tools, we have the right network in Asia, uh, across all Asia, actually, um, to combine our network of football and the para football community to be one uh, and, some, and support this. Yeah, and we, you know, para footballers work closely with the with the Asian Football Confederation um, and Aurora on one of their recent projects, which is um, Eagle Project, which Freddie was very much involved in. Freddie, do you want to share just about the the network and the contacts that we've developed there? Yeah, sure, no worries. So through through the Eagle program uh, with Aurora and the AFC, we got the chance to network with all. Um, the national federation, the national associations, the member associations on the AFC uh, through West, through West Asia, East Asia, and all other zones. Um, it was a great opportunity. We got the chance to meet everybody, meet key stakeholders, and uh, focal points under the social responsibility departments of every association. And I believe this will be key in the development of para football in the region. Yeah, and it's really important, you know, we have a very positive relationship working with the Asian Football Confederation and also the fantastic relationship with the Asian Paralympic Committee, who we're very grateful to for opportunities like this to, to link up with all of you. So we believe that working together, we can create a really united picture and a very strong network um, with Asia leading the way for, for other regions. Um, so here, just shared some examples, um, just really from my mind of how we can maybe work with a lot of you as National Paralympic Committees or maybe disability sport organisations or range of different organisations. Um, also in the Q&A, I'd like to get an idea from you about maybe the ways that we can work together or the support that we can offer to you. You know, what is going to help us to develop para football opportunities um, in your country. So here we, we got experience as say and supported around developing a strategy and development plan for para football. We all we understand that sits across a range of different stakeholders but if working with national Paralympic committees and working with football federations we can make that a joined up plan um, so that everyone is working together and that is fantastic. I said, we, we understand that it's a network of organisations who maybe lead on certain types of football um, and can end up working very separately. 
but by working together we can connect that and share each other's strengths, support each other in the areas of challenge and need. Also, we're working and with training and educating people, whether that's um, around the delivery and development of para football, or whether it's at the strategic level or across those different units that we've mentioned already. Um, and then linking, linking countries up with the international federations when appropriate to develop certain types of football. So if you're looking at para football and inclusive opportunities and maybe pan disability football, then we can work together um, to develop that. But then when it's the right time, then maybe a country or an organization wants to focus on blind football or power chair, CP, um, whatever it may be, then that's where we would support that relationship with our partner international federations um, who you have the reassurance are working in the right way because we're bringing them together and making sure that they, they work in the right way. Um, and then also about sharing that information expertise. Um, you might not believe me, but I've been involved in, in para football for a long time since I was uh, 15 years old. So I'll let you decide how long you think that is. Um, but uh, and no, no comments in the chat, I'll be having a look. But um, we have that experience across a range of different people, across all the world regions and different types of organizations. And that's where bringing them together to collaborate is um, making sure that we are stronger together, as Freddie mentioned earlier on. Um, also, we know there is fantastic work going off out there, but traditionally, we cannot be the best at sharing that and promoting that. So that's where Charlie, who I mentioned, is involved, and we're developing our communications team to shout about those success stories and show the amazing work that some of you um, are doing within your countries so that others can learn from that, we can learn from that, and we can support the whole para football movement to develop and work together. Okay, so on the screen here, I've um, put our contact details so you can reach out to us, but I the moment I hand back to, to Sean and the APC team to um, hopefully any questions, comments, feedback from anyone. Um, but we are welcoming all of you to really get involved and help us push para football um, to, as I say, make sure every person with a disability has a way to play football. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, Sam, for your presentation. I believe that this was an um, opportunity to get clear um, ideas on what uh, really uh, football founded, uh, para football foundation is. So um, I'd like to give the floor to the um, audience if anyone has any question. The Sam, Freddy, and you know, anything. Oh, no questions. Um, well, uh, let me um, invite Mr. Penger from Bhutan, if you are with me, that I yes. saw that you have uh, <laughs> you sent us the um, question in advance. So you can take this opportunity to ask your question. Oh, thank, thank you. Uh, thank you for the wonderful uh, uh, presentation, Freddie and uh, Sam. Uh, my question, I think uh, I, uh, I asked online was like, how we can start uh, CP. I, the, I think I wrote uh, CP because uh, the way I thought the webinar was on uh, CP football, uh, right? And now uh, after the presentation, I've come to know that uh, we have a better football uh, which uh, looks after all all disabilities, so it's not just uh, CP, but uh, visually impaired as well as uh, people with uh, hearing impairment. So my question was how uh, how we can start here because uh, uh, NPC Bhutan, of course, we have uh, we have a, a collaboration with the, the National Football Federation here in the country, 
and uh, we have also have come to know from them about uh, uh, some football programs for the disabled uh, people with disabilities, but uh, so far we could not start. So my question can be now, uh, are, are the national federations in the Asian region aware of uh, the para football program that uh, we have uh, come to learn today? Because I yeah. heard that, oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you for the question. And yeah, I know there was a, a little confusion about the, the, the title, but luckily I come to the webinar today with, with the two hats on. So within, Within CP football, um, as we shared in the in the previous webinar um, last year, so IFCPF and CP football offer a education workshop that, during normal times when we don't have the the current world challenges, we deliver a face-to-face -face workshop to over two and a half days to um, educate around CP football developments and all that side of things. So. Um, if there is a conversation there with anyone, then we can have a chat about that. Um, and we have some funding from, from UEFA actually to deliver that course worldwide. But we can also link up um, online and, and organise a meeting about that specific development. But on para football, it's fantastic to hear that in Bhutan, you already have that connection with the Football Federation. Um, so we can really now join up that relationship. So. I'd um, definitely organise a, a meeting with you. We can have a chat online and then we can maybe see about we're supporting some countries at the moment with online workshops. Um, we can do some conversations over, over email and then maybe as we move forward in the relationship with the Asian Football Confederation, then we can link up on, on future workshops and uh, potential funding support as well that's available through the Asian Football Confederation and the and the football networks as well. Okay, thank you, Kimjor uh, and Sam. Um, this is uh, a comment from CPSFI Kavita. Sam Para Football seems like a great opportunity. CP. SFI, SFI will look forward to be connected with the para football and promote it the same uh, in India. Thank you. Um, another question from floor audience. Any any question? It doesn't have to be only um, focusing on the. Um, Para Football Foundation, but also I, I think uh, any uh, question related to CP Football can be also welcome because we um, have the um, CEO of um, CP Football. So any question? Ladies and gentlemen. I think also for everyone, we'll, we'll share the, the email address, um, which is you know, the, the email to contact me is info at parafootball.com, which we'll share. Um, and you can also look at the website. But if there's any follow up questions, then, then please get in touch. Um, and as we're developing and building the organization, um, you know, we're continually looking for, for more people to get involved as well. We've just seen the, um, the question pop up in the chat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, only for male or both gender. So as an organization, uh, para football isn't delivering um, the activity. So um, actually dependent upon the, the culture um, within countries, because I know that different countries set up their football in, in different ways. But we work with the, the international federations. Um, so they obviously have their own programs around male, female or mixed um, opportunities. Um, but as a whole, when we talk about para football, um, we're not talking specifically about gender. We're on about making sure that whether you're male, female, you have a opportunity to play. So yeah, making sure that we, we equally develop both the, the male game, the female game, and then where suitable, those kind of mixed opportunities as well. Okay, um, it looks uh, 
Uh, no questions. Uh, so. Alfred? Yeah, um, so uh, I'm from the Philippines. Uh, hello, Sam. Um, uh, we had a little progress with our CP, uh, but we were hoping that we were we were sending them to the uh, Asian Games, but uh, uh, the recent one. But as, unfortunately, it was cancelled. Then this coming uh, Vietnam uh, in 2021, uh, we're we're not included. But anyhow, um, I just want to ask because. I, uh, this, I'm also handling blind, but not foot, football, but it's with goal ball. But I was looking forward of, because I'm a football coach. Uh, I'm, I'm also in the pathway of being an instructor for football. Uh, in, our, in our local, uh, what you call this, uh, local instructorship when we teach football, we do some little introduction to blind football but we, we really are not e expert on blind football but uh one of our instructor here our elite instructor who is uh who is connected with afc he, coach maro he was able to attend a seminar in uk before it was my way back uh, i think five years ago then they were talking about paralympics but he was focusing on on blind football because uh uh, in the Philippines, I think blind would be uh, uh, we have the data for the blind and we can get players from the blind. Not like uh, we had a hard time with 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 uh, CP identifying players, and so with the rest like amputee, maybe we have a lot of amputees in in some part of our country. Uh, so my question is uh, how, how the education about especially like blind football you would you cater uh seminars for it for in this foundation yeah so you, thank you for the question and, and nice to hear from you i was uh in the in the philippines a couple of years ago around the yeah. cp football um but yeah on education so the idea is that para football can provide that education around uh, para football in general, uh, maybe an introduction to each of the different types to give you maybe a more of an overall picture of things. Um, but then when you're looking at the more um, technical detail um, and specific knowledge around a type of football, then that's when we would link you up like with IPSA um, around blind football. But I think when a, a country is first starting out, it can be very difficult to to get all of the information and know about all the different ways. So yeah, that's where para football can um, provide maybe an introductory workshop to say, this is para football. These are the different types of football and eat this, you know, blind football works in this way. And here is some ideas, amputee, here's some ideas. Um, and then once you've had that overall introduction, it might be that you say, right in the Philippines, we've identified blind football will be um, our priority so then you will maybe work with IBSA to develop that specifically but more than happy to have that conversation with you offline of the webinar and um, we can talk about how we can best support the Philippines to, to develop all those different opportunities so thank you for the question thank you uh, thank you thank you Sam okay um, another comment from um, MPC Iran I'd like to thank you for all your efforts for bringing different forms of football in Paralympic movement together to have a united voice. We wish you and all our um, Paralympic friends success and express our interest to engage in any project to develop these sports within the region. Thank you. And um, Ahmed, Mohamed, I saw you have a question. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, I just need to clarify that uh, uh, the Maldives uh, is a fond of football. So we would like to introduce uh, CP football. We last year at the 
very simply, we just introduced uh, blind football in Maldives and uh, we got opportunity to train uh, coaches in India with the uh, Indian Blind Football Federation, especially uh, by the Mr. Sunil. They provided us this opportunity and we have uh, purchased uh, the equipment for, to uh, conduct the uh, blind football. But uh, for the CP football, uh, is it possible that uh, we can get a coach of just for a week or so to conduct a training program in Maldives so that our coaches and athletes can benefit from that and uh, we will be able to get the uh, technical part of uh, technicality of the CP football in Maldives. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, I'm sure we can maybe organise a, a meeting to um, discuss specifically about the, the Maldives and, and CP football because um, um, I know that through the the work we've been doing with uh, with the Eagle programme, Aurora and uh, the Asian Football Confederation, that the Maldives have been very active as a, a national football federation there. So it um, would be good to connect everything. But then we can look at potentially planning a a CP football course for you when travel restrictions and, and the pandemic um, allows that to take place. But then we can also have a look at maybe if there is support working with, with India, with the, um, with the CP football programme there, or if it's through online activities that we can engage for now, um, then we can bring that programme together and get a plan for the CP football and then generally around para football as well. So yeah, thank you. Okay, um, any more questions? Just to no. quickly go back mm -hmm. to the, the comment from Iran. Um, I think that was a very, a very good message for everyone about uniting para football and bringing everyone together. Um, to have that voice um, and that's where like Alfredo mentioned about the ASEAN para games and we talk about the Asian para games and things like that that through working together and building things stronger we can try and ensure that future representation of, of football on those programs whichever may be type of football it may be um, and maybe we also look at other um, programs that we can do around disability um, football events and para football events as well. So yeah, thank you for that. And uh, yes, I'm I'm sure we can get in touch with one another to involve involve Iran in supporting para football. So thank you. Yeah. Um, also, APC. Please note that APC um, is also um, ready to support any activities and project. Uh, related to um, para sports uh, within the region. So don't hesitate to contact uh, APC office anytime if you have if you need any um, um, support and from um, our side. Okay. Uh, if uh, there is no more question from floor, uh, I may uh, conclude today's session. So thank you, Sam and Fred and Para Football. And we really uh, look forward to working with you closely. And thank you everyone for being with us today. So wish you all the best for the new year again and have a nice day. Bye-bye everyone. Um, thank you everybody. Take care and please do get in touch. Thank you.